stake is their own survival. Honey, you're right. Is it Okapi? Okapi are the only living relative of the giraffe. They just never needed a long neck because their food is very low to the ground. They eat from bushes and brush. On your left are two different types of antelope. The tan antelope are called Greater Kudu, and the kind of reddish brown antelope are Bongo. Both male and female Bongo have horns. Unlike the greater kudu, where only their males have horns. If you look on the hill that we're sort of facing, you can see a giant bird nest that was made by a couple saddle-billed storks. Those birds stand about six feet tall with a oh, nine-foot wingspan. There's one a little around the corner here. It's the big black and white bird. Male settlebills always have brown eyes. The females always have yellow eyes. Is this one a male or a female? The one closest to us. I can see its eyes. It's a male. Yeah, I know. He kind of turned his head right at us. I asked it. When settlebilled storks do mate, they mate for life. flying birds, but among the smallest types of pelican. <laughs> Everyone smell the air here. <laughs> Hippopotamus mark their territory by spraying poop into the air in a method called a dung spray. And by breathing it in right now, you know you're in their territory. Don't you wish I didn't tell you that? But if I have to know that, so do you. I'm trying to see if I can find a hippo, maybe. Sometimes late afternoon can be a little tricky to locate them. Look at the bridge up above. You should note, I don't see every animal on every safari. If you want to see everything we have out here, you'd have to ride with us a few times. Take it from me, I do this every, I do this maybe 16 times a day. On your left, oh, it's a different one with the mouth open this time. These are Nile crocodile. See how a few of them have their mouths open? That's not a sign of aggression from them. That's how they cool off. Crocodiles don't have sweat glands like we do. So they'll lay on the riverbank with their mouth open. They have to vent that hot air directly that way. Crocodiles have been on the surface since the time of the dinosaurs. And they survived the mass extinction that wiped out most of the dinosaurs about 65 million years ago. Although crocodiles are not dinosaurs, they belong to their own family group called Crocodilian. What's the Crocodilio? <laughs> On your right is a Baobab tree. Baobabs are leafless for most of the year. To help them save water in their thick trunks. In fact, they have so much water in their trunks that sometimes elephants will scrape them with their tusks to get a little sip. 
we are now out here in the savannah. A vast grassland ecosystem that extends for hundreds of miles across both northern and central Africa. Now, to keep from getting confusing, I'm mostly going to wait until we're next animals before I talk about them. Unless it's anything really obvious like a giraffe. These are painted dogs. Oh, Most of you guys have probably never even heard of them because they're critically endangered. Painted dog packs are led by a dominant male and a dominant female that are also the pack's lead breeding pair. On the left hand side, these are sable antelope. They're long discourage predators from jumping out of their backs, which is something lions do to pin their prey to the ground. The clay pillars here are termite mounds, and termite mounds are as hard as cement, but they're really just made of clay, mud, termite spit, and dung. ever recorded would tower nearly the height of a giraffe. stripes on their butt will be a lot thicker than all their other stripes. And that's it. That's how I know. <laughs> on Grant Zebra, all of the stripes are thick. On Grevy Zebra, all of the stripes are thin. On Mountain Zebra, it's just the booty. The little golden animals with the white bellies are the springbok. They can jump six feet straight up or 13 feet horizontally and they're one of the fastest land animals. Wildebeest can run about 30 to 35 miles an hour, oh and the brown animals with the giant horns, the Ancole cattle, are also known as Watusi cattle, named after the African Watusi tribe. These are two common elands. They are the largest species of antelope. One of them is pooping. <laughs> On your left are some Maasai giraffe. Giraffe are the tallest land animal on Earth, at 18 to 20 feet tall. Even their tongues are over 18 inches long, and that's long enough to lick their own eyeballs. Do they do that? The giraffe will spend 22 hours a day eating. They only sleep for 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes? It's crazy. Or lower their own body temperatures. 
like having built-in air conditioning. Ahead of us are some greater flamingo. They are the tallest and lightest pink out of all the flamingo species. They get their pink color from beta carotene, which is found in the shrimp that they eat. Oh, and if you look carefully across the flamingo waters, there is an elephant staring at us way in the distance. Male elephants are solitary. At 11 years old, they leave the herd to live their life alone. So, whenever you see a big group of elephants, you're almost always looking at females and children. You might be able to see the elephant again from past these rocks if you look left. I'm not going to be able to stop here though, so you just have to look quick. Ahead of us are some white rhino. A group of white rhinoceros is called a crash. So this is a whole crash of rhino. White rhino weigh about 5,000 to 500 pounds. And they can charge at 35 miles an hour with thick skin like armor plating. That's fast for something that big. They have very poor eyesight, but really good hearing and smell. On your far right is an ostrich and a waterbuck. The waterbuck is the shaggy antelope. Don't worry if you don't see them. I know where that road goes. We're going that way. I am just taking the scenic route. <laughs> a group of white rhino is called a crash, by the way. For reasons that should seem apparent. Left-hand side are some cheetah, snuggling on the side of the hill. Cheetah are the fastest land animal on Earth, able to run at 60 miles an hour. They're only sprinters, though, so they can't maintain their top speed for longer than one minute before they overheat and have to take a break. This big rock formation here is called a kopi. The kopi rocks are favorite hangouts to large predators. They use them as lookout towers where they can survey the savanna for prey. And ahead of us are some ostriches. Ostriches stand six to 10 feet tall, and they can run 40 miles an hour. They're the very fastest two-legged animal. On your left are some lions. We're gonna let them sleep, okay? So don't try to wake them up. Now, contrary to popular belief, it is the female lions that do all the hunting. Male lions just stay home and guard the cubs. They're stay-at-home dads. Lion's roar is so loud, you can hear it from over five miles away. That is almost as loud as thunder. Those are warthogs on your left. A large burrowing relative of the pig. Warthogs use their upper tusks as shovels to dig holes. And on their bottom jaws, they have a secondary set of tusks. And those are the defensive ones. again on your right hand side along with that shaggy brown antelope that is called a waterbok. Waterbok are usually found near rivers, lakes, and streams. Hence their super creative name. And they're one of the only antelope species that do not migrate because they can't get that far from their water supply. Those are ostrich 
ostrich eggs, right? Ostrich eggs are so thick and so hard, you can stand on them without cracking them. Wow. When ostriches lay their eggs, they lay them all together in the nest of the dominant hen. Then both she and the dominant male. These are Nigerian dwarf goats. Look at these cute little goats right here. The locals milk dwarf goats for dairy products like milk and cheese. The yellow thing at the center of the yard is a beehive. A lot of farmers will build beehives on their lands so they can sell the honey. Now most of these animals we've seen out here today are either threatened, endangered, or critically endangered out in the wild. But don't despair. There's still a lot being done to try and save these animals before it's too late. Here at the Disney Conservation Fund, for example, working with wildlife groups to try and replant trees in the rainforests, clean plastic out of the oceans, 